Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. In this video, we'll be getting into a first quick look at the spark. So this video will be a little bit of a first look, a quick look at the spark. I will be starting a full review for the next coming two or three, four months, depending on how time goes and how many jobs I get where I can actually use my own gear. The first quick look will be in this video. So the spark, is I can I would compare it to a rake. We have the Skylotex Sirius, which is the same shape on the outside, and that is a descender with a anti-panic function. The spark is similar to the rig and the ID that this is a descender, but it does not have a panic function. So I like this device so far. I've used it in my Arata Level 3 reassessment in January when I was at Go Ropes in Poland. You can check that video up there. I used it as a secondary backup. At that moment, I was working on a different device review. Um, but I used this in a few rescues, playing around a little bit, and I like it so far. I've used it on a couple of days of work now, and it's a very smooth descender. Now the reason I'm able to make this video is because I'm working together with Skylotech for the 2023 edition of a Grimp Day, where I was last year. I had a blast. I made three videos of it. Four if you count the little trailer. You can watch the first day one video up there. Check the playlist in the description down below to watch the full report I did on the competition. I will be doing the same this year in Marseille. That will be in a few weeks when we get there. But Skylotech is cooperating with me on a review of the Spark. So like uh, most other descenders on the market, you can open it while it's attached with the carabiner onto your harness. For this device, you're pushing the press and slide button, you slide it open and you can thread in the rope. But here's the thing. The rope path is opposite of the other devices we are used to. Meaning, for me, it took some getting used to. Because I've been doing uh, loading Grigri's since they came out, early 90s, and this is opposite. So it takes some time to break that muscle memory. So I have to think about it when I'm loading in the rope. For certain systems I've developed for my own way of thinking, my train of thoughts. But if I have this on the harness, on the normal D-ring, I open the device, I take the rope, and this part that goes from up, that's where the rope goes. So if I go like this, then it doesn't work. So I have to think about, start here, go in, through, and in, and then you lock it. Everything else, it's the same. Tighten the rope, make it shorter, take in slack by making that 180 degree turn. If you want to descend, you have to press this. It's like a locking. I cannot open it right now, but if I press this, I can open it. Everything else is the same. I need to have control of the tail end of the rope at all times, and I can just descend down. This is in a very easy spot. You don't need to do anything. At the moment you grab the handle, you can actually release it. So the descending motion is very fluid. This does not have a panic stop, so taking out that last bit of slack is easy. Just open it fully and push it down. Or if you want to be a little, have a little bit more finesse in it, you just uh, depress the cam and you can press it down as well. The Spark also has a little becket here, which you can use when, when you're building your Z-Rig or your hauling system, you can use this to put a pulley in to get an extra redirect going. You can, there's a little extra tricks you can do with this. I will get into those at the full review video, but for now, there, we'll keep it at the normal descender functions. It has all, the certifications that we want. So it's uh, EN 12841C, uh, we have EN 341 for rescue devices and the 1551 for belay devices. And that's why for the belay devices you need this cam to be properly depressible so you can pay out the rope. It's a full like steel, solid, very durable, that's what I hear out of the, coming out of the field, out of the industry, it's a very durable device. It doesn't wear out as fast as other devices. If you want to load in the rope, like I said, it's very hard to do it 
the wrong way around. It is possible, I did it, but I have to think about it because of this little piece here that catches the rope. So if I would put in the rope like this, will be the right way. I start here, go in, and now it's locked here and I can finish the move. I, it's very hard to do it the wrong way around. So then I would start here and now I need to get the rope through here, which can still be done if you really start the opposite way and then go that, but I mean, then you really sort of have to, you have to really want it. You have to really think about how to do that. But if you put in the rope the wrong way, then it just becomes a regular, like figure of eight repelling device or an ATC, you just have to hold on. So better not do that, as with all the other descenders out there on the market. Here it says up. That's the part that should be pointing up or the rope that's coming in from the top or the anchor which might be at the bottom if you're lifting a load. So very easy, thread in the rope like this. Then you lock it, that's it. Now there's a little extra feature that if you have not locked it properly, let me see if I can show you. Like if you would be working quickly, it's already happening. You don't lo lock it completely, it's like this. But if I sit down or put weight in it, the figuration of the holes here, how they are aligned, makes it so that when you put weight in it, that it locks automatically, which is a pretty good feature, I think. So now I'll go up, do a little transfer, put the GoPro on, have you see, let you see a real good close up. I do a little transfer and uh, up, up and down descent, change over kind of thing. All right, so do a little, let's do a little climb to get the first look and first feel of it. I put on my backup device. I go up in the spark, put in the rope, which is still needs, I still need to get used to it a little bit. The job I did with it the last week was, did not involve that much ascending. It's a lot of slanted roof work. Fun job though. So I will ascend in my spark for the first few meters just to have a, get a feel of it. Uh, the motion will be similar as to all the other devices we know. Let's see if this is completely free. Yes, it is. So you go up, you pull the rope in a 180 degree turn up, similar as what I did at the Descender video I released, one of the first videos I released, you can see it in the corner up there. So I go up like this, fairly easy. If I want to make my life even easier, I could add something like a roll clip, put in the rope and go up like this, which is really, really easy. Manage the back up. Super cool, let's go down, back up high. One, take off my foot loop and descend down. So if I just go, don't, if I don't think about it and grab the handle and open it, I automatically depress the safety latch, which is a good thing. So you don't have to really think about it, but it is there so it, that you don't do it accidentally. It's only if you really grab it and go that it works. Right hand keeps control of the tail end of the rope and I go down easily. So let's uh, ascend back up the rope in the chest ascender just to do a few changeovers. And the sender is on. Open the crawl. I step up into the chest sender, manage my backup, take out the rope off the spark, up a little bit and then change over again. Mind the backup.
too bad. I'm going to, with my back towards the camera, turn around a little bit. So when I'm at the top, let's change over. So this is my first hanging changeover. Normally I would go different, but now, so maybe this is, should be a right-handed operation for me. Nope, that doesn't feel right. Take out all the slack between the chest sender and the descender. Step out of my crawl, lock the crawl. Go back down. Smooth and slow descent, nice and easy. Let's change over to. Can you me that touw give, man? Can you me that white touw give? No, yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So let's make a large rope-to-rope -rope transfer. Put it in my chest ascender. I don't have a secondary backup, so we'll just tie a butterfly knot here. Put in a cow tail. Manage those ropes. Whee! Smooth against the wall. Change over my backup device. Above the butterfly knot, take out my cow tail. Take out the butterfly. Here we go. And now take out the rope of the spark. And into the chest descent, out of, sorry, into my new main rope underneath the chest descender. Put the rope in, take out the slack. Step out of the Crawl or chest ascender, sit down, lock the crawl, take off the hand ascender, stow it on the harness. Make sure the backup is running. And descend down. So that's a very quick short look at the first look at the spark. Like I said, I will be doing a full review. I'm working on that right now, but that will take some time to explore all the features. Right now, it's time to head off to Marseille for a Grim Day and work on that full Grim Day report. Three days of exciting competition. I'm excited. Let's get into it. See you in the next one.